Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed for another episode of Unboxing Boxes. As you can see, we have the usual assortment of packages to get into, so we'll do that now. And as you've probably noticed, my voice hasn't fully recovered yet either, so it's been a slow, painful process. Still got a bit of a, a scratchy voice, but anyway, I thought, why not do an Unboxing Boxes anyway? They're only like 40 minutes long and I talk the whole time, so that's a perfect thing to do while I'm trying to get my voice back. So, I've got my trusty knife, and we'll get this little guy out of the way. And we'll start with the biggest package we have here, which is this package here. It is uh, quite heavy, and I'm not 100% sure who this one's from. It's got a rip in the bottom. Anyway, we'll just tear the bag off this one. Looks like it's a razor product. Okay, now we can unbox the box. We had to unwrap the box first. Quite complicated. I have no idea how to go about opening this one. And I've done it upside down. Raise the level cap. Okay. Let's see what raise the level cap's all about. I never was very good at raising the level cap. I'll get there. Done. Well, that's pretty cool. I'll sit that there for now. It's a nice bit of foam. Ooh, okay, I've got, to, I've got to show you guys this. So it looks like we have a new Razer keyboard, mouse, and headset. Let's find out what they are. Ooh, the Mumba Wireless. Looks like we have a new Kraken headset. And finally, a really heavy, solid feeling keyboard. We'll talk about in a moment. Okay, I think we'll just get this giant box out of the way. We'll start with the keyboard, and this is the new Black Widow Elite. Oh, it has a magnetic wrist rest that's very plush, very uh, nice and cushy there. I like that. So the uh, magnetic wrist rest snaps into place really nicely. It doesn't, oh, it kind of holds there when you move it forward, but it's not strong enough that it really holds on it. Let's go sometimes. So up in the top right hand corner here we can see some nice dedicated multimedia keys and there's a dial here as well which you can use to quickly control things like the volume and it also has a big mute button in the middle so that's very nice. And I noticed on this end we have some pass through, USB and audio pass through which makes sense as we have a headphone jack here and an extra USB. So it's good to see some pass through. You can plug things in like your headphones just on the edge there. Nice, quick, easy, stick your headset on and away you go. Now apparently using Razer's Synapsys 3 software, every key on this keyboard can be customized, can be programmed to do some sort of alternate function. So that's very cool. And there are three switch choices. So you've got the Razer mechanical switches, the green, orange, and yellow. And on my particular model, I have the green switches. Yeah, it's quite a heavy, solid keyboard. There's definitely no flex, very little flex in this thing. So you're yeah, not going to easily break it. It's a plastic backing. I believe, yeah, all the surroundings plastic. And just because it's so much colder than the rest of it, it looks like it's an aluminium um, sort of shroud over the top of it. Be a really nice, clean looking keyboard. This, I like it a lot, extremely comfortable. Uh, for those of you wondering, it is $170 US for the keyboard or $300 Australian. So a pricey item, but it, the build quality seems very good. A uh, great feature set. So yeah, another great uh, mechanical keyboard. Then we have the new Kraken headset. And Razer says these are the world's first gaming headsets to support spatial, or THX, spatial audio. Uh, basically that means you have a wider sort of soundscape and more accurate audio positioning. So, interested to see how that goes. I'll probably give that a go in Battlefield 5, maybe Fortnite tonight. Have a couple of rounds and yeah, see what I make of them. I liked the, I've liked all the Kraken headsets that I've tried on so far, and these are no exception. They're very comfortable. They're not super tight on your head, which I suppose is good for long gaming sessions. They do 
float around a bit when I shuffle, when I look quite quickly. Not that you do a lot of that when you're gaming, I suppose. You look just at your screen. But if you do happen to look around, I mean, they hang on. Yeah, they don't fall off on my head anyway, particularly easily. So yeah, they're comfortable. But the real test obviously is when you wear them for a few hours of gaming. Some headsets tend to give me a headache. So I will try these out tonight and see how they go. But of course that is a sort of personal preference thing. So one headset won't necessarily suit all. We've got uh, an al there's an aluminium sort of a frame that runs through the top of the headband. So that makes them very strong and that connects directly to the cans and the cans themselves are aluminium as well now. So plenty of aluminium on this should be very durable. Uh, really nice build quality here. Standard retractable mic. I believe that's exactly the same mic that was on the previous model, but that slides in and out really nicely. Then we have a braided cable here that comes down to an analog control, which you can use to increase or decrease the volume of the headset on the fly. And there's also a mic mute button. Then that comes down to a four pole 3.5 millimeter audio uh, jack and that can go into like I said the keyboard there so that works really nicely with the keyboard or your computer or your phone or tablet or whatever it is that you're using them with laptop alternatively if you want to use that spatial audio you can plug it into this little USB adapter here obviously that connects to your computer via a USB and that allows you to adjust things like the bass and then take advantage of those THX capabilities. So again, very keen to try that out as well and see how much difference that makes. Uh, this also has a mute button though. This is digital. So you might have to make sure that this one is enabled to use this one. If it's disabled here, then you can't enable it from here. So that's something to be aware of, but you'd probably work that out pretty quickly. Uh, apart from the upgraded sort of housing for the ear cups where you get this nice bit of aluminium here, uh, Razer says that the drivers have also been updated. So that's the speakers in the ear cups. So they've been improved for better frequency, a greater frequency range. But apparently that makes them a little less bassy, but you can sort of tune the bass with the USB adapter. So yeah, again, I haven't tried them out yet. Very keen to give them a go and I'll report back and let you guys know what I make of them. And then the item that I am most interested in is the Mumba wireless mouse. So. The previous wireless version required a special mouse pad to work. This is your more standard wireless mouse that will work on any mouse pad or surface. And it works via a USB dongle, which is probably in the bottom of the mouse. And yes, it is. So you've got a wireless dongle here. You can turn the mouse on and off via a switch there. There's a connect button. That'll obviously go into your PC, though you could plug it into your keyboard though that's probably not really an ideal spot but it would work oh and before I should move on to the mouse I should just note that the headset is $100 US or 170 Australian dollars which seems very reasonable for a headset of that quality and to avoid forgetting the mouse is also $100 US or 170 Australian which again for a high quality wireless mouse seems very reasonable and like the Logitech G902 that I'm currently using, I will swap it out for this later today and give this a good test drive. But like that, it can also be used as a wired mouse. So you've got a little micro USB connector there and you can plug that in. The cable is probably floating in the box that I've thrown off to my side there. So I won't uh, dig that out at the moment, but yeah, really nice looking mouse. And it's surprisingly light for a wireless mouse quite shocked by how light it is. I've got a few other wireless mice floating around and they're much heavier. I think from memory, it's about 108 grams. Don't quote me on that, but it's around the 100 gram mark anyway, and it certainly feels like it. Now the key feature of this mouse is that it does feature Razer's 5G advanced optical sensor, and that supports up to 16,000 DPI. I was gonna say 6,000 DPI, it's 16,000 DPI. Uh, they offer 50 million clicks for the main clickers, so you can do plenty of clicking. I have a reasonably biggish hand. It's not huge. It's not, it's just above average, let's say. And uh, it, it fits on this mouse really comfortably. I can use the bigger mice without a problem, but this is, yeah, really comfortable. It's probably similar to size wise to the Logitech mouse that I'm using. A little bit shorter, maybe. I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, it feels really nice. In total, there's seven programmable buttons. And probably the coolest feature about this mouse is that Razer are advertising a 50 hour battery life on a single charge. 
So that's definitely a claim I want to put to the test. 50 hours is very impressive. So we'll see if that's possible. And finally, if you're wondering what the raise the level cap is all about, basically it's a marketing thing, but Razer is suggesting that these three products go together very well. And if you use them together, it will raise your level cap. So basically make you better at gaming. So that's something all gamers would like to uh, be able to purchase some, some better gaming performance. Not sure if it'll make you a better gamer, but it certainly won't hurt. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I will plug all three of these into my gaming system tonight. Hopefully play a few rounds of whatever my mates want to play tonight and I'll see how good they are. So yeah, anyway, very good. Thank you Razer for sending that stuff over. I'm keen to give it a go and see what it's all about. Okay, my voice is sort of hanging in there. I'll open up this box, we'll see what's in here. I think this one, I think, yes, this one has been sent in by a Patreon member and they tried to hide who they were, but I've worked it out because their name was under the shipping label to me. So I know this is you, ZZR Hardy. I know you've sent me something and because it's you, I know this will be interesting. If you guys recall, ZZR Hardy sent me some interesting Asian drinks for an episode a few episodes ago now. That was a lot of fun. I don't know what he has sent me this time, but we're going to find out in a moment. Could be anything. All right. What am I looking at here? Paper, uh, more paper. Oh boy, this is looking like an interesting assortment of items. So we have some kind of t-shirt. Uh, that looks interesting. <laughs> okay, we'll start with this pillow thing. I don't know what this is all about. Maybe there was something said in the Discord chat, I don't recall. But he sent me some, I suppose, anime type thing. I'm not really up with with that stuff, but anyway. So that's what I've been sent. So, very comfortable. It's making the, um, the unboxing experience much more comfortable. We'll put that over to the side here for the moment. So we have an XL size t-shirt, so good thing he knows my size. I'm a large, but XL will work. I feel like there's a, a joke here or something I'm not understanding. But anyway, I won't put that on, I'll put it over here. I've got a mug. I have no idea what any of this stuff is or what it's about. You guys are all gonna be probably shaking your head at me, but cool. Thank you. <laughs> and another mug. Some characters from something. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So that's the stuff from Patreon member ZZR Hardy. And I probably haven't done that justice. Moving on, oh, we got a box around the back here. I'll get that out of the way. It says Corsair on it. So we'll uh, check that out. Could be a power supply, could be some memory, storage, uh, cooling stuff. They actually did release a new all-in-one liquid cooler. And I think this is it. And I've done it backwards, haven't I? Yep. So we have the new Hydro H100i Pro RGB. Of course it's RGB. I would have been very disappointed if it wasn't. So this is the 240 millimeter version of the 280 millimeter H115i Pro, which we've already looked at. I believe I have tested it on the channel. We featured it in a few builds. And now we have this model. So I am doing quite a bit of cooler testing at the moment, but it is on Threadripper. So I don't think I will be testing this in that particular roundup, though I could. Anyway, we'll see. 
uh, let me know if you want to see how this goes on the 2990 WX. Uh, if it supports it, it probably does. I don't know. Where's listed uh, compatibility? Where are you? I don't know. I'll work that out later. Anyway, we have the new Corsair cooler. So that'll be it's pretty much a mid-range cooler, though it should work well on your Core i7s and stuff like that, your Ryzen 7 2700X, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Price-wise, $120 US, works out to be about $190 Australian. So definitely up there, a premium 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler. Actually, before I move on, I just did a quick search on my phone and it is TR4 compatible, so I could test the Threadripper uh, CPUs, and I will probably do just that. Uh, the water block has a copper cold plate. The radiator is a fully aluminium radiator, and yeah, it supports all the latest platforms in addition to TR4, so you have AM4 and then all the current Intel platforms. So you can pretty much throw it on anything. All right, moving right along. Uh, which ones? Actually, I'll grab... I'll grab this box here because I think I know what this is. And we can just quickly get through this one. Yes, this is a package I've been waiting for for a while. It's actually nice to get the retail packaging for this. I don't know how many people have got these in their retail packaging. But it is the Mighty Wraith Ripper. I've already featured the Wraith Ripper on unboxing boxes. It was out of the, the AMD review kit for the 2950X and the 2990 WX. Uh, so I've been using that cooler, absolutely brilliant cooler, love it, but I want to do a build and use the Wraith Ripper and I don't want to take away the one on my test system and then I want one for personal use. So I asked Cooler Master if they'd be kind enough to send over to Wraith Ripper coolers and as you can see they've complied. So we've got Two Wraith Rippers in brand new retail packaging. Actually, I'll take the plastic off them. And in that TR4 uh, cooler comparison that I'm currently working on, I have already tested the Wraith Ripper. So those results will be there. And yeah, so the Wraith Ripper is made by Cooler Master. Cooler Master pretty much make all the AMD uh, box coolers. It's not an AMD box cooler, but it's kind of the official, you know, Threadripper Cooler, the Wraith Ripper. So yeah, very cool name, cool cooler, and it's a big, huge chunk of aluminium. All right, we'll get this little package out of the way next. Ah, we have what looks to be some DDR4 memory. The new Ballistics Sport memory from Crucial or Micron. Um, it says buy micron, but yeah, Crucial will probably be selling it. It's basically the same company. And it looks like we have four sticks. So four eight gigabyte sticks, 32 gigabyte kit, and it is DDR4 3000. So 1.35 volt, pretty standard stuff. And it's their Alliance Gaming. So that is actually the Tough Alliance Gaming. So this is, I got some from Team Group that we did for that Tough build, but this is the ASUS Tough themed stuff. So there we go, four sticks of tough ballistics sport DDR4 memory. I'll uh, I'll try and dig out a tough motherboard and I'll chuck this on here so you can get a look at it in its natural environment. But yeah, pretty pretty cool looking memory. No fancy RGB-ness or any that sort of stuff, so I don't expect it to be too expensive. I think it's selling for $180 US right now for the 32 gigabyte DDR4 3000 kit. I don't believe it is available in Australia yet. And yeah, for those of you interested, you can actually buy it on the Crucial website at the moment. There's quite a few different uh, capacities and configurations available. Those speeds do only include uh, DDR4 2666 and DDR4 3000, as they're probably targeting sort of like your H370 type uh, tough motherboards. So a lot of them are locked or have limited memory support. Anyway, some cool looking memory there, and hopefully I got around to showing you how it looks on a tough motherboard. So hopefully the B-roll looks good. Okay, two packages left. We've got this little one here. Let's get into that. So it's a very heavy little package. So no idea what that could be. Ah, it is another cooler, yet another cooler. So what do we have here? The Deepcool Gamax GT. 
Have I seen this cooler before? Maybe not. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but it's an AM4 cooler. Doesn't list any TR4 uh, compatibility, but usually they're fairly custom, the TR4 air coolers. But you can use it on your Ryzen, uh, second gen Ryzen or first gen Ryzen, so any AM4 motherboard basically. And it looks like it supports every single one of Intel's current uh, desktop platforms. But anyway, I won't dig that out and go into it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why Deepcool has sent this cooler over, but yeah, I'll find out in time, I'm sure. And the last package we have, which is kind of an odd shaped package. Not sure what that's all about. Yeah, a bit interesting. I'm not sure how to tackle this one. Okay, it's looking like it's another one from Deep Cool. No clues yet, but I saw the Deep Cool uh, logo. Oh, yes. Oh, that is perfect timing because this can be used in that TR4 cooler comparison I'm talking about. It is Fryzen. Yay. I mean, oh, it's a heavy cooler. I've been trying to get my hands on this for a little while now, ever since I saw it at Computex. This cooler we will take out of the box and have a good look at. Yeah, like I said, it's one I've been trying to get my hands on for a while. What do we got here? Is that just, how do we rip that apart? There's a tab here, I think we must break it and it comes off. Do you think this is working as well as it's meant to? Okay, oh, there's a tab at the end. I went the wrong way, I'm an idiot. Fail on that one. It probably worked better if I pulled it around the way you meant to go, so. Yeah. Anyway, that fail out of the way. It pops open like that. That's kind of cool. And then we've got that pops off. That's cool. So I've did that right at least. And then we have the fries and so mounting gear there. So it's a quite a narrow cooler, which is great for memory compatibility, and you can easily access. So that's the problem with the Wraith Ripper. It's a nice, big, massive, awesome cooler, but it does sort of, well I'm not 100% sure, I don't want to say it limits memory compatibility because I haven't tried it with a huge amount of modules yet. But what it does do is, the modules uh, closest to the socket on the left and right side uh, are extremely difficult to access because the cooler kind of comes out over them. So it makes it very difficult to get them in and out and sometimes you can't without removing the cooler first. Thankfully it is very quick and easy to remove. But anyway, that entire issue is completely avoided with this cooler because it's only about as wide as the CPU socket. Um, got a Threadripper CPU here, don't drop it, as luck would have it. So, you can imagine if that's the size of a Threadripper CPU, and you put that there, there's not much overhang from the socket, there's probably basically none from the actual socket. So those of you wondering, this big beefy air cooler is about $100 US, I think I saw $105 on Amazon, and it works out to only be $135 Australian, so that's a really good price there. And yeah, given the design and the name, though I'll talk more about the name in a moment, uh, it is designed specifically for the Threadripper processors, and it was uh, designed with the new second gen Threadripper processors in mind. So you get 100% uh, TR4 coverage, so again there's the base of the cooler. Hopefully you can see that quite well. And there's the top of the CPU. So as you can see, it is indeed 100% coverage. Of course, you get other important features like RGB lighting, though it's not just all about the flashiness of this cooler. It's quite well constructed. Obviously, we've got plenty of heat pipes and important stuff like that. But also this frame on the fan, that is made of aluminium. So it's not plastic that's just been painted to look sort of metallic. It's actually aluminium. So very durable. And then, yeah, back to the all important heat pipes. There are six heat pipes and they are dual length heat pipes. So they run 
through the full stack of fins up, then through the base plate, uh, the nickel plated copper base plate, then they wind back through the fins again. So plenty of heat dissipation from the base up into the fins for this 120 millimeter fan to then cool the fins. But yeah, really nice looking cooler this one and I'm keen to give it a go. It's got a unique looking fin design as well. Plenty of heat pipes and all that good stuff. And then of course, Deep Cool has, in their infinite wisdom, decided to call it Fryzen, which, yeah, a lot of people, that stirred up a lot of fuss at uh, Computex. People couldn't actually tell if it was like some sort of joke, because uh, it doesn't really make sense to make a cooler that sort of the implication there is that it fries your Ryzen CPU. So very, very strange choice, though it, it's possibly a stroke of genius because the uh, the kind of cheeky, odd, surprising name generated a lot of headlines and a lot of attention for Deep Cool. So maybe it was a success. I haven't, don't know how good sales have been, but we'll see how well it performs and if it's worth buying and we'll go from there. And then lastly, we don't really need to dig into this one too much. I'll throw up some B-roll of it because I've already got it. So that won't be too much extra work there. Uh, but this is, I got this one because I will be benchmarking it. So the, you'll see a proper review on this. It's not just an unboxing. Actually, most of the products we got in this episode will be featured on the channel and there'll be proper data and uh, opinions given on them. But this is the 280 millimeter version of the Castle. So we got the 240 millimeter uh, version originally, which I've already tested. It did a superb job of cooling the Ryzen 7 at 2700X. Uh, we've given that away now, so that cooler's gone. Uh, that was in a PC that I recently gave away, a Ryzen 7 2700 PC uh, with 32 gigs of RAM, Radeon RX 580. Anyway, a guy named Jared won it and he's over the moon. So if you're watching this, Jared, Congratulations. For those of you that missed out on that and are hoping to win another PC, well, we'll do some more giveaways and you'll get your chance anyway. I don't know if you'll win, but you can try. So anyway, I won't dig this one out and get into it because we've already gone over the 240 millimeter one in qu uh, quite a bit of detail. This is just a slightly bigger radiator. The block and all that sort of stuff is exactly the same. So anyway, you'll see a review on that very soon and you'll see it tested alongside the Fryzen. So those two will be tested. I'll probably throw the Corsair cooler into that. You'll see the Wraith Ripper for sure because I've already done that testing. Uh, and then we've got the Gamax GT, which I think is a really good value air cooler for AM4 and Intel processors. So not for, t not for TR4, so it won't be in that coverage. Then ZZR Hardy sent me some really unusual things. Not sure what that's all about. I'll no doubt find out in the Discord chat after this episode. But yeah, sorry for not doing whatever that is justice. Sorry, mate. And yeah, I'm going to head upstairs now to my office and I am gonna connect up all this Razer gear and give it a good go. And I'll let you guys know what I think of it, but I'm really keen to give the mouse a shot. Tim loves his Razer mice. He has a few of them. He uses them for his laptop testing. He's a big fan. So hopefully I will be too, as I test out the Mumble Wireless. But anyway, big thank you to Razer for sending that gear over. Very cool. Liked their little unboxing care package. The, um, the raise the level cap sort of lid thing's really cool. I have to find somewhere to stick that in the studio. Oh yeah, but this ended up pretty much being the cooler edition. We got three, four, five, six coolers. So I think that's a record for unboxing boxes in terms of coolers. Anyway, I did struggle through this one a bit, so I apologize for that, but I had to get this one done. I couldn't really wait any longer. My voice is still sucking, but anyway, hopefully it won't be too much longer. And hopefully you guys didn't mind this episode of Unboxing Boxes too much. I know it wasn't as animated as I normally am, but I had to unbox this stuff because I have testing to do and the testing is more important than the unboxing. But I like to share, you know, showing you guys the stuff as I get it. And I know a lot of you guys do like watching it. A lot of you have been hassling me to do this series. So here's another episode done and my voice is close to running out. So if you like the video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And I will catch you on the channel again very soon with lots of benchmarking and all that good stuff that many of you enjoy. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.